For some, being bad sure can be good. Drug Lord There's a reason why Scarface isn't about Tony Montana working hard at a menial, honest job while saving money to earn a living. Nope, he was a charismatic, explosive drug kingpin that lived an impossibly swank lifestyle. Although the movie is fictitious, it isn't a far cry from the life of some of the world's most prominent drug lords. Colombian cocaine trafficking boss Pablo Escobar reportedly spends $2,500 a month on the rubber bands used to wrap his endless stacks of cash, while Bolivia's Roberto Suarez Gomez once offered to pay off his country's 3.8 billion national debt in exchange for the release from DEA custody of one of his sons. Hacking the dramatized depiction of greedy, money-seeking computer hackers is normally tied to one of the big, ambitious scores that brings instant riches to the guilty, web-savvy perpetrator. More often, though, hacking is most effective as a subtle and sharded form of thievery that targets large businesses and other entities flush with cash that wouldn't be likely to immediately notice the scam. In 2008, for instance, hackers within the Russian mob stole over $9 million from ATM machines all over the world by cloning debit cards and increasing their withdrawal limits thereby enabling them to withdraw massive sums without drawing much attention. Con Artist There are a number of resources that a knowledgeable con man has at their disposal to milk wealthy targets out of some of, or, well, all their fortunes. A Ponzi scheme, the fraudulent investment operation employed by Bernie Madoff to swindle investors out of $65 billion is the most common one. But creative mischievous folks have long found a wide array of ways to bring in ill-gotten gains. In fact, the term con man originates from Herman Melville's 1857 novel, The Confidence Man, which chronicles a daring, manipulative young man who has made a living off of scamming New Yorkers. Embezzlement Embezzlement is often a dish best served cold. That is, rather than endeavoring to pull off one grand heist, the most effective embezzler will continue to take in marginal, incremental sums so as not to arouse suspicion. Interestingly, security and investigation firm Marquette International identifies their typical suspected embezzler as a 40-something female in a nondescript, low-level job within a larger company. In contrast to most thieves, she boasts neither the impulsive need for immediate satisfaction nor the desperate financial situation that demands cashing in right away. Hardly a standard criminal profile. Illegal Wildlife Trade Rightful public outrage has diminished the trade of illegally hunted wildlife. Just ask U.S. dentist Walter Palmer, who sparked vitriol internationally after hunting and killing Zimbabwe's beloved Cecil the Lion. However, that hasn't prevented certain endangered commodities, such as elephant ivories, from being hotly coveted and highly valued on the black market. Current estimates suggest that the black market on illegal animal products can be valued at $10 billion a year. Beyond elephants and lions, illegal trade of wildlife can also include wild birds like parrots and reptiles like crocodiles. Weapons Trafficking Unfortunately, the need for weaponry knows no national boundaries. Every country boasts means of defending themselves through military action, and, well, those tools of defense have to come from somewhere. Enter a slew of international arms dealers that have abandoned any moral or ethical direction in exchange for lots and lots and lots of money. These notorious international criminals include Victor Bout, Leonid Minin, and Sarkis Sogenhallen, all of whom were studied by Nicolas Cage as research for his role in the 2005 film Lord of War. These men have profited off of the realization that guns, ammo, and other weaponry means big business all over the world. Pimp In 2014, a think tank called the Urban Institute released a report on the pimping industry in the U.S. with the needlessly complex title, estimating the size and structure of the underground commercial sex economy in eight major U.S. cities. The report revealed some startling statistics on just how much the average pimp in cities like Atlanta, Denver, and San Diego can rake in. Engaging weekly earning estimates, the report highlighted a range from an impressive $5,000 a week for a Kansas City pimp to a whopping $32,800 for a pimp from Atlanta. That works out to $1.7 million annually. Ticket Scalping Through secondary ticket websites like StubHub, anyone with an IP address can now make money by reselling tickets to hot events for profit. You'd think that would severely cut into the net gains of professional scalpers, but even this once exclusive illegal industry continues to thrive amidst added online competition. As long as there are coveted concerts and sporting events for which customers are willing to pay top dollar, there will be those with advanced access to tickets through their network of associates that will happily sell. On the right night, a scalper can come away with thousands of dollars in tickets sold. Counterfeiting One of the toughest crimes to crack down on 
Some estimates suggest that the practice of counterfeiting can be worth as much as $250 billion annually. That may seem rather steep until you consider how widespread the worldwide counterfeiting network reaches, with a particularly strong presence in China, Russia, Taiwan, and India. Unsurprisingly, given its strength and status as a globally relevant currency, the US dollar is the most widely forged currency in the world. Smuggling the crime of smuggling is most commonly associated with drugs, a lucrative trade that has historically involved crime syndicates from all over the world, with unfathomable sums of money changing hands. However, especially in light of the recent Syrian refugee crisis, shady business opportunities have presented themselves to allow for human trafficking to grow into a more profitable commodity. A premium package for those migrants that can afford such a deal might include a new identity, foreign passport, legitimate documentation, and a plane ticket to the US, and could set one person back hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, we hope you found this video interesting. Here's a couple of the videos that we think you might dig, and please don't forget to click like and subscribe. Thanks.